ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ പ്ലാനിലും ഉദ്ദേശത്തിലും ഉൾപ്പെടുത്തി ഇവിടെ സഭ ആരംഭിക്കുന്നതിനും പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങൾ കൊണ്ടുപോകുന്നതിനും പല ഗ്രാമങ്ങൾ സഞ്ചരിച്ച് സുശേഷം അറിയിക്കുന്നതിനും പല സ്ഥാനങ്ങളിൽ സുവിശേഷ പ്രവർത്തനങ്ങൾ ആരംഭിക്കുന്നതിനും ഇടവുകൾ രൂപീകരിക്കുന്നതിനും അത് മുഖാന്തരമായി ആയിരത്തി തൊള്ളായിരത്തി ഇരുപത്തെട്ടിൽ ഇത് അസമമായിട്ട് തുടങ്ങി അസമ രീതിയിൽ വന്നപ്പോൾ വളരെ കഷ്ടങ്ങളും പ്രയാസങ്ങളും ദുരിതങ്ങളും ഒക്കെ അനുഭവിക്കേണ്ടി വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ആദ്യമായിട്ട് സ്കൂളുകൾ തുടങ്ങി പിന്നെ ഇപ്പോൾ പൊതുവായിട്ട് ആശുപത്രി അനാഥശാല അങ്ങനെ ഇവയെല്ല വളരെ വിധത്തിൽ വർദ്ധിച്ചു വന്നതെല്ലാം ഈ അസമത്തിൻ്റെ പ്രവർത്തനത്തിൽ നിന്നാണ് The church has many a retreat center for spiritual and psychological development of the people. Unity who experienced the exploitations of caste system found a new identity for their lives through the gospel. The church started her activities among the Dalits inspired by the reformation. initiated by Abraham Malpan in the 19th century. The entry of Dalits into the church is not merely a social welfare measure, but it is an issue of identity consciousness. We believe that the sacred scripture is the word of God and is written and compiled by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The salvific plan of God in and through Jesus Christ is its content. God's word is like a double-edged sword and is a light for our path. The words of the Lord will be accomplished if one forms his or her life based on the gospel. I am the way the truth and life Polycotil Mardinosius who was consecrated by the patriarch of Antioch made a claim for the position of Malangara metropolitan and thereby the royal proclamation made in favor of Matthew's Mardinosius was cancelled the patriarch of Antioch convened a synod at Molanduruthi in the year 1857 in which Matthias Mar Athanasius was humiliated much by this synod the Malangara church was brought to a stage in which she had to seek permission of the Antiochian see for every spiritual and physical matters the patriarch divided the church into various dioceses and the diocesan administration was handed over to the newly consecrated bishops when matthias mar athanasius passed away in the year 1877 a glorious era in the malangara church history ended which was noted for his great and eminent personality the assurance given by him in his last kalpana that god will take care of his sheepfold in his providential care is being carried out even today Thomas Mar Athanasius succeeded Matthew Mar Athanasius Polycotel Mar Dionysius argued that as Thomas Mar Athanasius was not consecrated by the patriarch of Antioch the possessions must be abdicated thus originated the seminary case The verdict of the royal court which was the appellate court was not favorable for Thomas Mar Athanasius. The court pointed out no aberration of faith or illegitimacy of consecration but Thomas Mar Athanasius had to vacate the seminary. There was no litigation for Kurtamala Mallapalli Pundala, Elendur, 
Kuripalli and Kottarakara churches. As a symbol of oneness in the name of God, Chenganur Parepalli is still kept as a common worship place for both the Orthodox and the Mathama churches. This period of history in the church was of controversies on account of matters like the celebration of Holy Communion, the presence of God in the holy elements and so on. In spite of these arguments and controversies, the division of the church was unthinkable for the forefathers. One has to remember them with thankfulness that they were willing to forsake the churches their ancestors built and the cemeteries where their forefathers were laid to rest for the sake of the faith. The tearful laments and prayers that came out of the thatched huts they temporarily built for worship was heard by God and as a witness to that Hundreds of beautiful churches are seen in different parts of the world today. Thomas Mar Athanasius entered into eternal rest in 1893. He kept the valor and faith of the faithful in spite of the losses. His untimely death was the result of so many mental blows that he suffered. Koturet Achan, at the time of Tirumeni's funeral, prayed like this. When Moses died, O oh Lord, you had prepared Joshua for the Israelites. And now, for us, who is there? Aib Toma Katanar, the then Vicar General of the Church, for about a quarter of a century, was the representative of these times. He took initiative to get this beautiful landscape known as the Panchayat Puraidam to be the headquarters of the church. when there was no metropolitan for the church. Due to the unexpected demise of Thomas Mar Athanasius, Joseph Mar Athanasius, metropolitan of Thurior, and his suffragan Gevagis Markorilos were gracious enough to consecrate a metropolitan for the church. This second son of Abraham Malpan was consecrated by the name Titus I at Cotium Cheriapalli. The Mathama Church was willing to consecrate bishops for the Toryu Church as well when and where the need and request came. The name of Tarath Chantapilla Katanar is ever remembered for the stone support given to the church at the time of the consecration of Titus I. He gained the Zion Hill campus at Kotem where the Mathama Theological Seminary and the Matuma High Secondary School exist. Trust in God and innocence were the characteristics of Titus I. The Baptist missionary Gregson arrived in Malangara during those times and many like Mahakavi K.V. Simon became votaries of re-baptism. Many Pentecostals also became proclaimers of re-baptism. Hundreds of schismatic groups began to come up after 1905. The efforts of Kotudeth Joseph Gatanar to stabilize the church against the stand of re-baptism 
through his exhortations were edifying and encouraging. Titus the first was guided by God victoriously in angelic protection in front of his enemies. The world famous Maraman Convention started during the time of Titus the first. Eminent evangelists from India and abroad have preached the word of God in the Maraman Convention through the years. Later on, Reverend Thomas Walker, Sadhu Sundar Singh, Dr. E. Stanley Jones, Kagawa and so on also preached on the sand bed of Maraman. Through the verdict of the Maharaja of Travancore on July 12, 1888, the reformers of the church were deprived of their worshipping churches and the clergy. The situation was really miserable, one of emptiness. The only wealth at hand was the word of God. It was the Maraman Convention that restored the energy and vitalized the community. Proclamation of the good news and a life based on the same was the one that gave new vision and depth to the church in its ecclesial life and for its social life in the society. It is the largest annual religious convention in Asia that is held on the banks of the river Pampa. It holds firm the principles of universal brotherhood and love beyond the limitations of religions that all are one and all have a saviour in common. My name is Emmanuel Garib. I was born in Kuwait and God is blessing me to be part of this big family, the family of God. Well, Musalli Salat Abana Ladi Fisamawat, it is the cradle of all the associations and organizations in the Marthoma Church. It is a matter of joy and an inspiring experience beyond words to watch people praying with all their being earnestly, singing and clapping. Unmindful of the scorching heat and the dust, thousands come to be renewed, to be rejuvenated and they return to their homes filled with the Spirit of God, strengthened and motivated.
The economic depression that followed the Second World War, coupled with the increase in population, motivated the Mathumites to migrate to Malabar and the rest. Matthew Smar Athanasius Episcopa, Plavunkal Achen, and other clergy of the church gave leadership for this movement. The inspiration derived from the Mariaman Convention also enhanced this process. The hurdles of sickness like malaria and other practical obstacles did not discourage them. The church supported the migrants in their pains. Matai Kashisha or Plavangalajan of the Matama Church initiated and encouraged 40 persons, assuring to procure them five acres of land each for thousand rupees in Malabar. They entrusted their man with him. He reached Nilampur Palace and got the 250 acres of land near the river Kadimpura from the Etan Tampuran. During those times, the areas around the Lambu was full of wild animals like elephants, tiger and so on. And hardly any people were found except on the roads and in the bazaar. Dr. Yohanan Matoma was the metropolitan then. He was requested to send a priest to Malabar so that there could be some parishes around. I arrived here on June 24, 1951 from Edearanmula. The next day was a Sunday and there was no other place set up for the Eucharistic celebration. I placed a cross on a table in one of the houses and had the Kurbana offered. The mission activities in the church are to equip the members of the church. Bearing witness to the Lord should not be confined only to this, but in all our involvement in the marketplace, office, business place and so on. So, in all the limited circumstances which the Lord has given to us, we need to bear witness to Jesus, proclaim His good news of salvation. Abraham Metropolitan had prayed, Lord, May my people be scattered. It sounds as the result of such a prayer that the Madhumais today migrated to the Americas and Europe in the 50s and 60s. As a result, there's a diocese today. About 35,000 families are living there. It is not the same circumstances and challenges that the new generation facing today, unlike their parents born and brought up in India. Therefore, the church needs to find new avenues, ministries and vision to be relevant in the changed situations. Only then, can we be effective and relevant for the new millennium? It is a vital responsibility from the part of the church to make the children and youth to be part of the missionary activities of the church today. In view of this, we have started special ministries among the Native Americans and Mexicans. It was so difficult for these children to understand what is poverty in reality, as they are from quite different communities. As they understand what is pain, suffering and poverty, they also are becoming aware of their commitment to the church as well. This is a very positive sign. The church becomes alive and relevant when it enables them to accept the Lord as the master of their lives. Titus II was consecrated Metropolitan in 1910 at St. Mary's Cathedral, Puttankava. Many prominent persons came forward for ordained ministry during his tenure. His period was noted 
for the construction of many beautiful church buildings. When the eyesight of Titus II faded, the suffragan Abraham Marthoma Metropolitan undertook the administration. The great Abraham Marthoma exhorted every Marthomite to be an evangelist. Maraman Convention gained worldwide recognition during his time. As he once kept the Pandal of Maraman Convention from devastating whirlwind and rain by leading the people in prayer, he kept the church also intact through his prayer life. In 1937, Yohanan Mar Timotheos and Matthews Mar Athanasius were consecrated. Abraham Marthoma opposed the unwelcome political moves of Divan Sir C. P. Ramaswamy Iyer. The proposals like independent Travancore were vehemently criticized and opposed. He had such a friendly relationship with the non-Christians also that he could pray at the deathbed of Sri Narayana Guru, the vanguard of social reforms in Kerala. Even during those times when the influence of social reformers like Sri Narayana Guru, Ayan Kali and Poikail Kumara Guru were dominant, he could attract so many to the way of Christ. Pidiyari, the practice of keeping apart a handful of rice from daily consumption for the church. Palliteng, a practice of keeping a particular coconut tree and its eels for the church. Adhyafala, keeping the first fruit for God and the practice of offertory during the Sunday worships were practices initiated by Tirumeni. By these practices, the Matoma church grew as a self-reliant church. The church is still enjoying the results of Abraham Tirumeni's prayer. Dr. Yohanan Marthoma was elevated Metropolitan in the year 1947, the year of the Indian independence. A lover of Indian arts and music, Tirumeni had a special affinity to its nature, the flora and fauna. The emblem and motto of the church, Lighted to Lighten, engraved with the cultural symbols of India, expressed his mission, philosophy and personality. Yohanan Marthoma consecrated Alexander Mar Theophilus, Thomas Mar Athanasius and Philippos Mar Chrysostom Episcopa in 1953. Thirumeni cared especially for the youth and children. There arose a meaningless accusation that Thirumeni gave undue importance for sacraments at the risk of the word of God and thereby led the church astray from the foundations of the scripture. The Mahatma Church could enter into full communion with CSI and CNI churches during Thirumeni's time. Matthew Smart Athanasius gave a new enthusiasm to the church in the evangelization service. 
he worked hard to build up the education institutions of the church. Matthew Stirmini passed away in the year 1973. As the mission and programs of the church were expanding, Joseph Mar Irenaeus and Isho Mar Timotheus were consecrated in 1974. Dr. Johanan Matoma was one among the few who even questioned the practice of imposing emergency in India. Formation of the churches was an important step in the ecumenical journey. He could guide the joint council of the Matuma, CSI and CNI churches in proper directions. Thirumeni could set a model even to the other churches through his projects like the Bhu Bhavanadhanam and marriage aid. He prayed even for those who stood against him. He stood fast to his convictions and guided the church with sense of direction and thereby was immortalized. Alexander Matoma, like his predecessor, also made deep impact in the hearts of people through his Gandhian simple lifestyle. His tenure in office as Metropolitan was even full. Zacharias Matheophilus was consecrated Episcopa in 1980. Thomas Mar Athanasius, Suffragan Metropolitan, expired in 1984. <laughs> Yanganiana, Maripo Mila, Devangalin, David Lake, Tirin, and Yanganiana. To lose guts and to find God. Devangal and Nastapet. Isho Martimotheos, an epitome of humility and simplicity, expired at Port Blair in 1988. The Martoma Church expanded to different parts of the world during Alexander Martoma's tenure. Tirumeni had great treasures in heaven. He always found refuge in the shadow of divine grace. <laughs> because of my old age and ill health, I have requested the Sabha Mandalam to take away the responsibility of the metropolitan from me to someone more able. I earnestly pray for my successor and wish him all success and blessings. Philippos Marcus Ostem, officiating Metropolita. Philippos Marcus Ostem, officiating Metropolitan, is being enthroned as Philippos Martoma Metropolitan. He entered into the serenity of eternal rest in 2000. The church is proud of the present Metropolitan Dr. Philippos Mar Chrysostom Martoma. Realizing the contemporary relevance of theology and by interpreting them in his own unique style, Tirumeni is a role model for the bishops of other churches as well. Tirumeni 
was born to very reverend K. E. Uman and Shoshama Kalamanil. The Kalamanil family is blessed with generations of priests. Mar Chrysostom has crossed the milestone of 50 years in episcopacy. I believe in one and only one God. I do not consider there is a God for the Hindu, one for the Muslim, another for the Catholic. It may be there, I am not aware, because I am not an authority on the person of God. There is only one God, and different people understand that God differently. My mother's understanding of my father, my brother's understanding, my own understanding, the understanding of the people of his parish, the understanding of the worker in the field is all quite different in nature. As the 20th Metropolitan of the Malankara Syrian Church, he leads the church gracefully. The humorous style of conversation and the unique ability for communication make him distinct. It is not only that I am sad when I see you all, but there is another feeling also. There are some here with my own nature, not being jealous, but praise the Lord Almighty. God is glorified only when the lost humaneness of humanity is restored. My message for you all is that you may repent for your sins and believe in the kingdom of God. There is no better message than this. Sin means that you are estranged from God. Repentance is returning back to God. The suffragan metropolitan Dr. Joseph Mar Irenaeus and Dr. Zacharias Mar Theophilus give valuable services to the church. The hard-working children of the church in different parts of the world support and uphold the church with a sense of pride. Givargis Mar Athanasius, Givargis Mar Theodosius and Yuyaki Mar Kurilos were consecrated bishops in 1989. The present episcopal leadership of the church consists of Joseph Mar Barnabas, Thomas Mar Timotheos, and Isaac Mar Philexenos, who were consecrated as bishops in 1993, and Abraham Mar Paulos, who was consecrated in 2005, along with the senior bishops. The church is blessed by the leadership of these eminent bishops. May the good Lord in his abundant mercy, shower blessings on them to guide and lead the church, the clergy, evangelists and faith community. The Malangara Mahathoma Syrian Church, founded by St. Thomas, or Mahathoma, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus and known by the same name, is apostolic and Catholic in nature. The church, having more than thousand parishes, is divided into eleven dioceses. It has ten bishops, about nine hundred clergy, more than 1,000 evangelists and over 900,000 believers. 
the most reverend Dr. Philippus Marcus Hostum Mathoma Metropolitan residing at Pulatin Tiruvalla the headquarters of the church leads the present day church the episcopal synod is the supreme body to implement the faith and order leadership and discipline in the church malangala marthoma suriyani sabhayude paramadhyakshan the head of the marthoma church is the marthoma metropolitan there are two trustees a clerical trustee and a lay trustee the apex body is a sabha pratinidhi mandalam consisting of 1369 members the sabha council which is elected by the mandal